Now that you've risen from your bed, do you wonder why it is so late? Uh, it's the change to daylight saving time that made you last out of the gate. Whenever you woke up this morning, you're just in time to look at a timepiece guaranteed to remain accurate absolutely for a lifetime. And then some. Ben Tracy shows us celestial timekeepers at work. If you're still grumbling about the hour of sleep you lost this morning, then pay a visit to this modest storefront in San Francisco, because through these doors, they've got time to spare. So here we obviously have the planets. This is a more ancient way of telling time. Yeah, this is what's called an ori. It's, uh, it's a planetary display. So the, uh, the very innermost one is Mercury, and that one's actually made out of a piece of ground meteorite. The Sun and Venus are um, types of calcite. The Earth there is a Chilean lapis. These planets move in sync with the orbits of their heavenly counterparts. They're the display of a clock, but it's hardly your grandfather's clock. The movement of the spheres marks the passage of decades, centuries, even millennia. It's the prototype of a clock designed to run for 10,000 years. There definitely seems to be, um, like most things, two kinds of people. Um, there's the kind of people who get it right away, but then there's a whole set of people that think it's just crazy and it's a waste of time. You can guess which category Alexander Rose falls into. He's the director of the Long Now Foundation, a group dedicated to elongating the attention span of the human race. And it's no small irony they've set out to break our habit of clock watching by building, well, a clock. Why do we need that change in consciousness? If you get a really short sense of time, then you have a really small sense of what's possible. The clock project is the brainchild of one of the biggest brains around, Danny Hillis. He built his first computer in grade school and went on to design some of the first supercomputers. Today, everyone from molecular biologists right, to atomic to bomb this. designers crunch their numbers on his lightning fast machines. Hillis proposed the 10,000 year clock as an antidote to all that speed. So if we look at a problem like global warming, world hunger. It's a pretty impossible problem if you try to uh, solve it in, say, a congressional budget cycle or something like that. But if you ask, are we going to solve those problems over the next thousand years? Absolutely. Humans have come a long way in the last 10,000 years and will probably go a long way in the next. Indeed, the 10,000-year timepiece is inspired by the age of these pottery pieces among the earliest artifacts of our modern agricultural civilization. Proposed designs for the full-scale clock call for it to tower 60 feet high and be nestled into the side of a mountain in eastern Nevada. Powered by the sun and built to the specifications of a deep space probe, Alexander Rose says the clock will be engineered to keep on ticking without human help. The one thing we do know about all civilizations is that none of them have lasted. Um, so we're trying to design for all of those, all of those uh, eventualities. But should some future visitor find the clock and turn its crank? Why on earth does a clock burrowed inside a mountain need bells? Well, the idea is that people come and visit it. And um, the reason we wanted a different sequence each day is to give um, each group of people that visit it a unique experience and to make that time their time. The latest prototype sports wheels eight feet in diameter, nearly a half ton each. And Rose himself brings some weighty qualifications to the project. When he's not tinkering with clocks, he's battling bots. His robotic gladiators made him a favorite on the cable series BattleBots. Amazingly, it had a lot of uh, a lot of parallels um, in that when you're building things to be destroyed at their fastest in three minutes, you learn about destructive modes of of all kinds of things. So it was kind of an accelerated aging chamber that battle box that we worked in. Building a clock to stand the test of time certainly won't come cheap. Millions have already been spent and millions more are needed. But by dipping into his own deep pockets and those of his high-tech friends, Danny Hillis hopes to keep his bid for immortality on a tight schedule. Well, 
I'm only going to live for so long, so that's the real deadline for the <laughs> that's the real deadline for the project.